Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. If you're going to go deep in the rabbit hole, there's like the grays that everybody talks about. And then there's another thing called the tall whites. The people have described them. They, they almost look like Scandinavian or something like that, like pale skin. Some alien life is probably, you know, 100,000 years ahead of us, 700,000 years ahead of us, a million years ahead of us. But some alien life is probably millions and millions of years yeah. ahead of us. They probably don't want to fuck with us anymore. But I bet that intelligence reaches that moment where you can join the intergalactic hive yeah. of minds. And the civilization reaches some insane harmony with the very universe itself. Right. That's probably where it goes if you don't blow yourself up. I'd say he's probably right. If aliens exist and there's all these intergalactic travelers and stuff, I would say eventually you're, we would get advanced enough that we would be able to join them. But I don't think that we're anywhere near close enough. I think we've got so much learning to do. I think we're still in our infancy as far as humanity goes, as far as our spiritual and our cultural awareness. I think we got a lot of growing up to do. If some advanced civilization from the outside came in and saw us, I think they would just look at us as children. Why do we have 46 chromosomes and all primates on the earth have 48? How did that happen? Why do we have two chromosomes less than every primate? Was there something that occurred with us? When you look scientifically and you look at skulls and the size of skulls and you look back at the genetics of humans, they found an anomaly emerged at roughly 200,000 years ago where the brain size of humans more than doubled, like out of nowhere completely contradicting this idea of a slow evolutionary type of change that happens over time where this aspect of instead of being like a micro change this was all of a sudden like a macro change and doesn't make any sense when you look at how certain aspects of our what we're told with evolution over time periods occur in, in a purely uh, natural way with no influences or anything right but here we have something that that emerges with humanity where we un undergo this process where instead of being stronger and more fit for the natural elements like a Neanderthal was, which by the way, they could crush us. I subscribe to the theory that psychedelic mushrooms played a big part in our mental development all those years ago. I think that once we discovered those, I think that our mental capacity probably jumped tenfold overnight and got us much closer to where we are as modern day human beings the temple of the first yes. emperor of China. They buried him 2,200 years ago. And it's supposed to be like unbelievable riches, but they're terrified to go into the tomb because there's all these writings about it having rivers of mercury and booby trapped. And they're so concerned trying to send a scientist through there and trying to open it up and find out what would happen. I mean, even 2,200 years later, that there literally yeah, might be rivers of mercury. That's oh, pretty wait. wild. Some fucking Indiana Jones shit. Think Dude, so. there's, it's insane. They, I believe they found it in 74. And this is the very first emperor of China. And as they uncovered more and more and more, they found an, a literal army. It's fucking insane. Wow. And this is all lined up in front of his tomb. And they're really concerned that if they open up the yeah. door, rivers of mercury will s flow out and kill everybody. That sounds like an irrational fear if I've ever heard one. <laughs> I'm certain there's a way for them to open that door safely and figure out what's behind it. If anyone in charge of that's watching, holler at me. Holler at your boy. I'll, <laughs> I'll go check it out. Hello, Laura? Yes. Um, I, I don't have a whole lot of, uh, time. Um... Well, look, let's begin yeah. by finding out whether you're using this line properly or not. Uh, Ari, Ari said you were. Yeah, um, that's right. Were you an employee or are you now? Uh, I, a former employee. Former um, employee. I, I, I was let go on a medical discharge about a week ago, and... And... <laughs> I, I've kind of been running a, across the country. Um, oh man, I don't know where to start. They're they're uh, they're, they're gonna um, they'll triangulate on this decision really really soon. So um, you can't spend a lot of time on the phone. So give us something quick. Okay. Um. Um. Okay. What what we're thinking of as as aliens are they're uh, they're they're extra dimensional beings that. An earlier precursor of the um, 
a space program made contact with. Uh, they, they are not what they claim to be. Uh, they have infiltrated a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of aspects of, of, of the military establishment, particularly the Area 51. Uh, the, the disasters that are coming, they, the, the military, I'm sorry, the, the government knows about them. And there's a lot of safe areas in this world that they could begin moving the population to now aren't but they're not doing they're not doing anything they are not they want the major population centers wiped out so that the, the few that are left will be more easily controllable discharged <laughs> That's a classic audio clip I decided to throw in there for those of you who haven't heard it before. I want to say this was debunked years ago um, that the original caller called back into uh, the radio station years later and and did the voice again and, and said it was all an act. Plus, one thing you got to take into consideration here is the many, many years ago that this phone call took place. And all of our major population centers have not been exploded and all the stuff like this guy claimed was going to happen. There have been attempts to lure in UFOs with nuclear weapons. Really? Yes. There have been attempts to like fake that we're going to use, bait them. Bait them. There was a way to bait every single time. It was an experiment really with nuclear powered ships carrying nuclear weapons. And they wanted to see if something would follow them. And they did it 18 times. 18 out of 18 times it followed. Then you would have a method. You would have a way to study this. Right. right? See, I think we're, we're reinventing the wheel so much. Like, we can well track UFOs. S-51 radar is a radar that was in that uh, strike group. Cool radar that in 2004 was, you know, relatively new. It goes up to only 80,000. So when they say they were dropping in from 80,000 down to sea level like that, it was, they were actually coming from higher. Right, they just detected it when it hit 80. And they say with the spy one. But there are other systems, I am told, that we're tracking these as well, above that scan volume of the spy one. See, this video right here makes me question a lot of stuff, because if we're supposedly in contact with them, our government's in contact with them, and we've got all these ships, and we're working hand-in-hand -hand with them, and receiving alien technology and all this stuff, and we're sharing our technology back with them, yet they're conducting experiments to see if they're followed? Wouldn't that imply that they're not in communication with these things? Hey, if you're enjoying this video, you should come back to join me tomorrow because I make a new one just like it every single day. It would be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back to join me. See you tomorrow. You know, we have an asteroid headed towards us. It's called Apophis. The very first calculation showed that it would collide with Earth on April 13th, 2029. So better data came along and we learned it would not hit us if it threads a keyhole, a very narrow set of orbits, if it has one of those trajectories, Earth gravity would be just wrong, okay? <laughs> to, to, to bend it in such a way so that seven years later, it will hit Earth. So you wanna make sure this does not go through the keyhole. If it goes through the keyhole, it will hit us April 13th, 2036. The chances of this now, our data tell us, is several in a million. So you say, oh, I'm not worry about that. But if it threads the center of the keyhole, it'll hit 500 kilometers west of Santa Monica, plunge into the ocean to a depth of three miles, cavitating the ocean to a width of three miles. The only thing that makes me feel all right about this one is that Neil deGrasse Tyson is a Looney Tune who is a mainstream shill. And so I don't put a lot of weight into anything that he says now. Is this thing possibly going to hit us? Potentially. He could be telling us the truth. Um, are we going to figure out what to do by then? I'm sure we will. Smarter brains than ours will figure out how to stop it if it's a real threat. Now keep in mind, this guy's dead right now. So people are saying when he says this statement, he's looking to the side and he seems really nervous, unlike his other videos, and they think he's forced to make this claim. Listen. Sorry to disappoint you guys, but all of the videos... Nah, you look. Yeah, he looks to his left, right? The videos that I posted were scripted. They were just fake. They were just strictly for entertainment. I'm sorry to disappoint you guys.
I still need to do quick update, update. Okay, so that was his last video yeah. for I think three months. And then he posts this. You might not see me post ever again. My videos weren't, they weren't fake. Oh, so he says they're not fake. And this is his last video that he ever posted. Look. And he says he sees military on the same mountain. Look. What? Where he saw the giant. <laughs> Are we allowed to talk about this man? Yo. That's the last time they ever heard about him. And no, he's actually, like, you can Google his obituary. He's dead. He's what's actually what's gone. Why are we talking about this, bro? He's what's actually gone. I know, so why are we talking about this, bro? Because <laughs> if he's trying to spread the message, why are we spreading his message? There's some major issues I have with this whole story in general. The main thing being, why is this guy being singled out as the only person that's potentially spreading this information? This video is all over the internet. Tons of people have shared it. A lot of people have talked about it in more detail than he has. He just captured the original video. A lot of people like myself have watched the video and commented on it a lot more than what he's commented on it. Uh, secondly, it's in a pretty open, apparent, apparently well-populated area. There's cars driving by and everything when he's filming this mountain, so it's not like he's the only person with the potential to see what was going up on top of this mountain. For those reasons, I find the whole story to be a little suspicious, but it is definitely interesting and definitely doesn't look like a common coincidence. I have a picture of one of the aliens been working for the United States Pentagon for the last 58 years. His name is Val, Val Valiant Thor. He's right here. There's my father in the background. This whole place, the ready room of the USS Eldridge, Al Bielico has probably explained or maybe even shown you this picture. There's a list of the, some of the notable people in it. They're all the atomic bomb scientists of the day. All the uh, time variant uh, experimentalists of the day, all the top physicists of, of that particular day. This was in this was in August of 1943. Now this guy has not changed one iota in 58 years. Started work, he came here, crashed here, or whatever. Whether he's under duress or not, he started work for our U.S. Navy and military operations in 19. 37, uh, either 37 or 38 is what I've been told. So it's, for 58 years, this man's been employed, probably under duress. If you don't do as we say, we're just alien bait or something. I don't okay, so this is Phil Snyder talking. As you know, Phil Snyder, he was a casualty for knowing too much. Uh, he supposedly died of asphyxiation. He did not. You know why he died. He knew too much, but uh, he had actually lost limbs from going into a battle with the reptilians in inner earth that sounds crazy but research it you'll see what i'm talking about we have been led to believe and we, we've been made to believe that we're just all that kind of stuff is just you know phony and it's a hoax and you're a kook if you believe in it and you've been brainwashed to believe that growing up that there's no such thing as this there's no such thing as that well, there is. There's a such thing. And, you know, it's obvious that something's going on. If this man, Val, Valiant, Thor, whatever his name is, if he worked for the government for this long, and he hasn't aged, he's the ageless wonder, we know that he's not of human species at all. So, who is he? And where is he now? Um, you know, Phil Schneider, he's been, uh, he, he passed away a while back. So, with that being said... What's really going on? I find this one very interesting because I've heard that name probably a hundred times or more, uh, that Val Valiant Thor. And to actually get a photo of what he supposedly looks like, I thought was fascinating. Expect to see some more digging on Val Valiant Thor. I'm going to do a little bit more research on that. We'll have some more videos up soon on him on the channel. What's crazy, there's another man. He was part of that same FBI group that confiscated Nikola Tesla's inventions and blueprints. He claims that he was able to recreate how the Egyptians made the pyramids. With the documents and with the blueprints, he started experimenting in his own backyard. He built this thing called the Coral Castle. No, 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 it's called the Coral Castle, yeah. I think in Florida. But the neighbors, what they said was every single night, they wouldn't see any construction vehicles, nothing like that. Because a lot of that didn't even exist at the time. Yeah, yeah. But what they would hear was whistling. Oh, they would hear whistling and almost like a humming noise. And as we know, Tesla, Nikola Tesla, his famous quote was, if you understand the world through frequency 
and vibration, you'll have the key to the universe. Nah, That's what he said. Nah. I think the story of Coral Castle is uh, was one of my favorite modern day mysteries. I think if we could figure out how he built all those structures and was it? In, I think it's in Florida. But if we could figure out how he built all those structures, then there's your answer on how the pyramids were made. Maybe not on how the stones were cut, but how they were set in place. And I believe he used sound frequency to do it. Nine years ago, it was kind of just, oh, we don't know what happened with it, right? We're just gonna assume that it crashed into the ocean and no one saw it and we didn't find it on, above or below water. So around August 8th, these videos were posted on the UFOs subreddit. The first video, uh, has an archive date of March 19th, 2014. This is our satellite video. The plane disappears from space time entirely as we see. Now in the description of this video, it says received March 12th, 2014. That's four days after Malaysian Airlines disappeared. There's another huge clue in the satellite footage. When you look at it, it's two scrunched together videos side by side. When I first saw that, I was like, that's so weird. Why is it like that? What we're looking at is two different cameras that are making a 3D stereoscopic image. And now when it comes to satellites, there's not a lot that are like that. There is a set of them that there are, the, no the Naval Ocean Surveillance Satellites, NOS satellites. Then you look into what has happened for people that le uh, illegally leaked spy satellite information, and the, the sentences are harsh. Spy satellites are probably the number one most guarded secret, other than maybe UFOs and whatever else is out there, right? Because look at what we're looking at here now. Look at how much we can discern just from looking at these videos about the technology. Like I would even wonder, this was nine years ago. Are we to the point now where we have enough satellites so they can do a remote playback of the entire world anytime they want? I thought that was interesting at first just because I've seen that video footage and this kind of confirmed that it come from a legitimate source. I wish they would have let it play out so you could see the see the the blip there at the end where the thing disappears. But the implications of this of the technology that was used to capture that video is a little more terrifying. Forrestal is told that every book, every book in the libraries, every book in the colleges, every book in the universities, every book on this planet is misinformation. It's misinformation. So, which is initiated by the Draco reptilians as far back as 6,000 years ago. The reptilians really came into control and started to um, be able to manipulate what was going on on the face of the planet about six to 7,000 years ago. It is true that they have different masking technologies to be able to be in a room and look like a human, but usually they're in underground bases in various places on the globe, as well as in a huge area in Antarctica. The southeast region has a large number of underground caverns that are kept extremely warm, too warm for humans, by geothermal heat. It's a perfect place for all of these colonies that the reptilians have. They're basically cities, huge cities with millions of them. So. Secretary of the Navy selects Rick Obata. He's not even an American. He comes over here with his family. He goes to school here. He does, goes to the second year in high school. He leaves school. He joins the Navy as a three, as a third class seaman, works his way up in the Navy. Now he's a commander. Okay? That commander is selected by the Secretary of the Navy to head up all of these operatives to go back into Germany and find out what's going on. Because that individual had never had misinformation given to him about every technical field on the planet. Everything we learn in the establishment controlled education systems is specifically designed to program our minds away from the truth. Physics is wrong. Medicine is wrong. History is wrong. Everything we are taught in textbooks is mainly wrong. And this is done purposefully 
so we don't understand how to move our bodies, how to feed our bodies, what really happened in the past, what technology can really do these days. All of these things, if we learn them, would help us empower ourselves, would help us actually understand what's really going on with our reality. Now, if you were to go to San Diego and look over at North Island, you're going to see a tall building like this. There's a small office in the top of that building, which is a secret office for the Admiral. This is where the operatives come to. So the, the Admiral's aide comes to my barracks, taps me on the shoulder, and he only says one word, he's here. We drive over to that building, we get up to the top, we go into this conference room, a small room. Admiral Rickabata sits here, I sit here, and one of three other bosses that I have are all captains. So now I have three captains as bosses, and now a two-star admiral. He just got another raise. Wow. He just came back from Lockheed. He just came back from Scripps Institute. He just came back from all the aircraft company. Wow. Now he's got these operatives coming in. So the operative sits on the other side of the table. He discloses to us these fantastic things that Germany is doing that make no sense. Now I have eight girls and three PhDs as a group. We put together a package from what the operative brings back. Some of it is photographs. Once in a while, it's a manual, hardly any manual. A couple of manuals were not even in English, German, or any other language. They were extraterrestrial hieroglyphics. You see all of this stuff. You hear it. You understand what the Germans are doing. They, they didn't just get documents from the extraterrestrials. They got brand spanking new space vehicles. Here's one. Here's another one. Here's. They brought these. They take you inside. They show you how to drive it. So they put me in a secret laboratory, <laughs> which is designing not flying wings like Northrop does, okay? These are just a fuselage with no wings and no tail. Half airplane, half space. Kind of, uh, that was a little bit longer of a clip, but I kind of wish it went on for another 20 or 30 minutes. My bullshit meter is usually pretty strong, and that guy seems like he's telling everything off of memory. Seems like he's uh, being legit. He's at least telling you what he believes to be true. Very, very interesting. Love stuff like that. Every stone making up the pyramid was not glued into place using concrete or mortar or anything like you'd expect. In reality, each side was cut so precisely and placed so delicately that the joints between every stone making up the pyramid fit so perfectly together like Legos that you can't even fit a razor blade between them. Meaning that this structure has literally withstood the test of time using nothing but its own weight and precision made cuts. Something you can't necessarily say for any of the 100 plus pyramids built by cotton copycat pyramid builders for over 700 years after the Great Pyramid. So how did the Egyptians cut each stone so perfect? According to mainstream Egyptology, they used copper hand saws and chisels. And just to show you how utterly unrealistic this is, not long ago, one Egyptologist attempted to recreate the stone of the Sphinx using copper chisels, much like the ones the ancient Egyptians might have used. And after several days of hammering away at this stone nonstop, he barely made a dent in it. After days of work, their copper chisels and stone pounders are barely making a dent. Not only was the copper chisel not chipping away at the limestone very efficiently, but the chisel itself would become utterly useless after a few dozen strikes. When Roger tries chisels made from bronze, the results are disappointing. As you can see, 
We're just we're leaving a lot of metal and very little stone is flaking off. Eventually, the dude gave up on the chisels altogether and finished the project using a power saw. And since we're on the topic of saws, a completely different group of researchers created a large hand saw that was made of copper, much like the ancients would have used. And after several days of sawing back and forth with the combined efforts of multiple people, they could only cut the stone at a rate of about four millimeters per hour. Dennis, will we see any progress in our lifetime? Yes, if you came back in an hour's time, you would see about a four millimeter cut down into the stone. An alarmingly slow rate that doesn't make any sense when you closely examine some of the cuts made on these ancient stone blocks. As you can see here, we achieved this in just a few days. For example, this sarcophagus at a museum in Cairo was said to have been discarded in ancient times because on the bottom of it, there's a cut that's about three feet long that was just ever so slightly off center. So they abandoned it and tried again with a new piece. Here's why this doesn't make any sense. If they used copper saws to cut these stones, it's safe to assume they probably would have realized they were off center long before getting three feet into the cut. Heck, even if they could cut four inches per hour, they would have still had time to correct the mistake. Which tells me that whatever tool the ancient Egyptians used to cut these stones had to have been operating at a much faster rate. That, or they had the incompetent stoner Egyptian working on that one. Rock on, dude! And with all that being said, even if we accept that the pyramid was nothing more than a fancy tomb built with copper tools, how can we explain the fact that it only took them 20 years to build it? The math simply doesn't add up. Because let's say you were able to cut, transport, and place 10 stones a day. That means that to place 2.3 million stones, it would take you roughly 600 years. Years. And this is assuming you don't make any mistakes along the way and keep continuously placing stones 24-7, 365 until it's done. And to do this in just 20 years, they would have to place 315 stones every day without ever taking a break using just ropes, pulleys, and ramps. I'm so done with all these archaeologists trying to convince us that they use copper tools and stuff to cut this stone. You almost can't find the seams in between those stones unless uh, even when you're looking at them, they're so hard to see. They're so fine. The idea that the stuff was done by hand is absolutely ludicrous. Copper is toxic according to the medical medium. Well, I will continue to keep drinking out of my copper, just like all the copper pipes that used to be around America in 1910, 1920, 1930, 1940, until about World War II, they all started disappearing. And the whole copper is toxic is an interesting thing because our body is primarily copper and carbon. So how can copper be toxic? And then the other thing too is copper and carbon create electricity. What are we? Electrical beings. If we don't have electricity, our body doesn't function. That's why you, they zap you back to life. And people used to wear copper to get rid of inflammation and pain. That was a big one. Down in the south, they used to wrap people with copper so they could get rid of inflammation and pain and osteoporosis. So it doesn't make a lot of sense that copper is toxic to our bodies if it is part of our body. That's for sure. And remember, there are people, as I always say this, there are people paid to say something of a certain way, to get people away from something. I always feel a little iffy getting into this health and well, health and wellness uh, side of the conspiracy stuff because there's some really off the wall stuff out there and I feel like a lot of it can be dangerous. That being said, the guy does bring up a good point. We we used copper for all these years, no negative effects. I mean, my grandfather, he used copper, he had copper pipes in his house and I believe they're still there. He lived up to be 96 years old. So are they really that dangerous for us? Or are we being lied to yet again about something else? Probably the latter. Did the U.S. government make a treaty with aliens to allow them to abduct citizens? According to Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper, they did. 34th President Dwight D. Eisenhower allegedly did this on vacation in Palm Springs. So according to the book, in 1953, Astronomers noticed strange craft orbiting the equator and through radio contact, they were able to set up a face to face meeting with the beings on those ships. The movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind is a fictionalized version of it. Meanwhile, a race of humanoid aliens landed in the Homestead Air Force Base in Florida and said, whatever you do, do not make a deal with those aliens that are circling the equator. Now, this race of humanoid aliens said, we would like to help you, but with your spiritual development. And they said, we won't be giving you any technology because you're not even spiritually evolved enough to handle the technology you already have. And these humanoid aliens said, the only way we're going to help you is if you agree to disarm all nuclear weapons. And the U.S. government was like, nah, 
We're going to work with those aliens that you say are evil because they're going to give us weapons. So President Eisenhower planned a trip to Palm Springs, and the meeting was set to happen at Edwards Air Force Base. Palm Springs, Edwards Air Force Base. And this happened on February 20th of 1954. According to this, Eisenhower was spirited to the Air Force Base. So then I found this Washington Post article where they discussed the possibility of this happening. And this part's not in the book. On that night that Eisenhower was spirited to a military base, the Associated Press reported that he died of a heart attack in Palm Springs, and then two minutes later retracted the statement. This was actually a year before Eisenhower's heart attack. But now let's see what this treaty was all about. So the aliens would give us advanced technology, weapons, and the aliens would agree to not make treaties with any other Earth nation in exchange for abducting humans on a limited but periodic basis with the stipulation that humans would not be harmed and would not remember the experience and that they would be returned to their point of abduction. That they would have to provide a list of everyone that they've abducted to a group which was then developed called the Majesty 12, sometimes referred to as Majestic 12 or MJ-12. Now, according to the Washington Post article, the Nordics were the humanoid race, and it was the greys that we ended up doing the deal with. President Eisenhower gave a statement that he was only in Palm Springs to go to the dentist, and he attended church in Los Angeles the next morning. What's interesting, according to William Cooper, four people were at this meeting, one of which being the Archbishop of Los Angeles, who also attended church that next morning. Coming up, the Area 51 caller that tried to expose the treaty. Let's finish out this whole Eisenhower treaty with aliens thing. So as we know, he was the 34th president. But before that, in World War II, he was chief of staff of the army and then the supreme allied commander. But that night in Palm Springs was not his first run-in with aliens. On December 13, 1944, the chief and commander, Dwight Eisenhower, wrote up a press release which became this New York Times article, claiming that mysterious floating mystery spheres might have been a German weapon. These mystery weapons that did no harm were called Foo Fighters, and some of them were captured on film. The term UFO was not coined until almost 10 years later in 1953. As you see here, Foo Fighter was used to describe various UFOs. And those Foo Fighters were not the first time either. Two years earlier, there was the Battle of LA. It was initially said that California was being attacked by Japan, but later the government said that it was basically a weather balloon that started all the shooting. In this declassified document, FDR talks to Eisenhower about how they need to figure out practical uses for the atomic secrets they learned from studying celestial devices, as well as this document addressed to the Special Committee on Non-Terrestrial Science and Technology. Keep in mind the Corona crash, better known as the Roswell crash, didn't happen until 1947. But one month prior to the crash, this document talks about relationships with inhabitants of celestial bodies. So some people asked, why do the aliens need permission? But as we can see from this document, it was the U.S. government that says we need to establish an agreement with legal regulations upon which future relationships should be based and that such agreement would be necessary. Then they discuss the possibilities of these celestial bodies or EBEs, extraterrestrial biological entities, desire to settle here. It states that if they're politically similar to us, then they would be considered individuals. If they have political differences, then they would have the right to colonize. But a new form of colonization would have to be conceived, possibly with the help of the United Nations. And this letter was written by Dr. J. Robert Oppenheimer and no other than Albert Einstein. Now let's go back to that night in 1954 that Eisenhower allegedly made a treaty with aliens. According to Piole to Pale Horse, four other people besides Eisenhower were in attendance, one being Gerald Light, a metaphysical researcher. This is a letter between Gerald Light and Mead Lane. He was a pioneer of ufology. The letter confirms the four people who were there, confirms that Eisenhower was spirited over to the airbase, that they met with Ethereans, and that everyone there was in a state of complete collapse. This clip makes me think of earlier in the video when we were learning about the possibility of them doing these test runs to see if they're being followed. If we cut a deal with one group of aliens and then the other group of aliens we decided to turn our back on 
and they're the ones that are worried about our technology and how advanced it is and how we're not using it properly, it would make sense that they would be the ones that would be following us whenever we're transporting potential nuclear arms. So I thought that was interesting how that kind of lined up, but um, grain of salt. I don't know. It's hard to confirm this stuff, man. Oh, yes. Oh, oh it is a bear. It is definitely a bear skull. Holy mackerel. Look at that. That's not a bear skull. Actually, that is not a bear skull. You're right. What? Hey, put that down. Hold on a second. Yeah, put that down. Holy cow, dude. That, that is not a bear. Um, I'm going to keep touching it, dude. I've got service. The fact is, Do not call anybody. whatever this is, was maybe shot in the head. There's a there's a hole in the skull. Maybe it was shot. Do you know what happens when people find like a T-Rex skull, an artifact? They keep it. No. They, no, they he is document right. they it because yeah. there could be like other stuff there because it's delicate. I think we should put some sort of log that we can mark yeah. the area over it. It's not like somebody's going to come up here and find it. I no. took a pin. Okay. We're good. Let's go. I really don't want anything to do with this. Whatever that is, it's not supposed to be that. Oh, don't I left my backpack. I'll meet you guys on the trail. Uh, so flustered, I left my backpack. I'm totally taking it. It's cool. I'm sorry, Mario. So, another real question is do I tell any of them that I have the skull? The way that was filmed makes me wonder if it was real, even though it looks real. I put it in here because you hear the argument all the time of if Bigfoot's real, why don't we ever find uh, Bigfoot bones out in the woods? And uh, those guys just found something. Uh, what do they call it? Gigantopithecus or something like that. Yeah, that looked like a Bigfoot skull. It looked real. Those teeth didn't look human. Something he said to me and my family by the year 2025, the disclosure rollout would be on the table all those years ago 2008 or 2009 he said the government's disclosure plan is going to be out on the table by 2025 and we're going to this is what he's saying he said and we're going to do it through soft disclosure meaning there's going to be like a, a a steady drip of information so as to not shock people. It's going to be like little bits of information coming out over a long span of time. Right. But, you know, that that we should know pretty much the majority of everything by 2025. If there is government disclosure about this stuff, it's going to be 100% accurate? No, actually the opposite. How so? I think it's going to be uh, more or less uh, fear-based. More, more or less, you know, militarize that you're seeing it now. They're jamming our space. They're jamming our radars. You've got uh, congressional hearings where they're coming out and they're, you know, they're saying, I have a classified dossier that was handed to me by a superior. And I've heard stories of people getting harmed. And, you know, you've got like a Mexican congress coming out with a body saying there's eggs in it and you got all the stuff it's building this this it's building this fantastic sci-fi story right but i think at the end of you the, think it's fear-based yeah i think the general picture is to create this narrative that we are all tiny specks of uh pretty much nothing and that there's no hope there's no any inkling of spiritual evolution and why do i think that it's because it's what the lady told to my dad she said that they are going there is a force she didn't say who she said that there are people at the helm of humanity she didn't say the illuminati she didn't say the bilderberger she didn't give a name right she just said there is a dark force a dark force at the helm of humanity at the tippy top yep controlling humanity there's a dark force and they are using biblical scripture namely the book of revelations to uh, sort of script events on a global stage to manifest a cataclysm and that there would be a great deception that this deception would be basically to paint the phenomenon in a negative light are these human beings yeah that's that's i mean I, 
Are they? I don't know. Maybe it's an egregore. A what? An egregore. The concept that, like... You know, it's like the devil. It's like if enough people mm. believe in something, it gives it power. I think if enough people believe in something, it more or less can become true. You know? Yeah, 100%. And, you know, if, if enough people believe that the phenomenon is so negative and so scary and so warlike and they're jamming our radar and they're mutilating cattle and all this stuff that they're telling us that's going on through this the, these official quote channels um it, it it's 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 spreading this this very dark fear like narrative it would be so easy to make up a story like this in 2023 haven't seen how all this stuff is playing out in real time and just claim that someone told you this stuff was going to happen before and here's how it's all going to end because we can all see how it's going to end it's all going to end with some fake alien invasion and the government's lying to us about all this stuff that's the only reason that they're saying anything about it at all is because they're lying because that's all the government does to us is a lie so yeah this is probably accurate but is also probably a tall tale at the same time. He's probably making all this up and he's just thinking out loud what we're all thinking on the inside. Well, guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the clips that I threw together for you today. I try to put some varied stuff in there and cover some topics that, that we uh, haven't seen. Some of, the st some of my favorite clips I had to pull out because they were just too uh, graphic for YouTube. Uh, thinking actually about starting a Patreon to put clips on that that uh, can't go on YouTube. The more graphic, more edgy stuff. But we'll see. That might be something that I'm working on soon that will be coming down the road. In the meantime, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and come back to join me tomorrow. I'll have a new video up just for you guys like I, don't, like I always do. And until then... Be safe, stay happy, I will see you tomorrow.